first is better than fast. That's the tagline of Arena's latest suit, the Primo. The Arena Primo comes in this lovely pouch and all the packaging is sustainable. The Arena Primo is Arena's latest suit and it's a massive departure from anything they've previously done. This is the first suit in 12 years to not feature carbon fiber. They released the Carbon Pro back in 2012 and since then, every single model they've done has been new and different and used a different amount of carbon fiber, but it's been a carbon suit. The Primo is the first departure from that and I'm super excited to review it. Arena say this is their best suit ever. The idea with this suit is to make it an ultimate flagship. It's not a case of, hey, I swim middle distance, maybe you wanna try and get the glide. Oh, I swim distance, maybe I want the air. Oh, I swim sprint, maybe I want the core effects. The idea with this suit is that you say to them, what's your best suit? Arena, I wanna get your number one, your flagship. And they just say, it's the Primo. There's other models, but the Primo is the one you want. When you look at what other brands are doing, leading up to the Paris Olympics, people like Speedo just releasing a 2.0, basically the same suit all over again. And here Arena are dropping the biggest suit they've ever done, the best suit they've ever done. I'm gonna say it right off the bat, this is the best jammer Arena have ever made. At 365 pounds, the Primo is not cheap. It is a flagship suit and it does come with a flagship price. But today we're gonna to talk about what it does to justify its steep price. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you wanna see more suit reviews, and if you wanna support me any further, recently I've released this Arena Aquaforce Wave Cap, the fastest, best cap for racing, on my website with my logo in this awesome white and blue. Make sure you go check it out, link in the description. Let's break the Primo down. Why is this a suit that you should consider buying? What are the biggest kickers? Well, the first thing I wanna to talk to you about is the Tenzo Elastic Fabric, Hyperforce. This is, again, a departure from carbon fiber, and it's one that I'm really intrigued by. The suit does have two fabrics. It has this kind of rib tech style fabric on the back that has channeling for extra hydrophobia, and then on the front, it has this second fabric that's a little stretchier. From what I understand, with every other suit that you have out there, you have to get the smaller size you get. That's because the maximum compression comes at the maximum stretch. So when a fabric is fully stretched, that's when it's compressing the most. The reason this Tenzo Elastic fabric is so impressive is that it hits maximum compression at just 50% stretch. That means that you're not trying to squidge into the smallest suit, which ends up restricting your movement and making you feel fatigued at the end of races you can get a slightly bigger suit that fits more comfortably, gives you that freedom of movement, and still gives you that maximum compression. This is not just them going on a whim and saying, oh yeah, it's five-star compression. They measure compression. Arena have someone who used to work from a compression wear company who has a device that measures compression of a suit. And they have measured this to give more compression than even the core effects while still fitting more comfortably and leaving athletes who try it to say, I need a size down but then they get the compression reading and they don't need a size down. That is staggering. I first got this in a size 26 and I could get it on. It took me 10 minutes to get on, I got on, but it felt a little uncomfortable. I told Arena this and they said, there's no need to be uncomfortable. And they sent me the size up and the size up. So I got a 28 and 30. I ended up feeling best in the 28. I put this on in literally a few minutes. It's not flipping on like a Arena Aquaforce MF, but it goes on really easy and it's comfortable when it's on but still it compresses. And I've used this for 50 freestyles and felt fast. It lifts me up in the water. It's to dual taping at the back of the suit has snap and kick support. It's got dual layering, which leaves it very buoyant. And let me just clarify right off the bat. This is the first time I've worn a non-Mizuno suit and been like, wow, this is buoyant. This holds my hips high in the water. And I've even let some of the athletes try it on this training camp in Arizona flagship and their feedback has been the same thing. Wow, Sonny, do you get that feel of lift in your hips? Hell yeah, it's great, and that will make you faster. It will also make you farther over any distances. And I've never had a suit until now where I feel like I've got freedom of movement and comfort while still getting buoyancy. That means I've only ever been able to recommend suits to sprinters that give you buoyancy, but now I can recommend a suit for everyone that gives you buoyancy. And buoyancy is everything we strive for. We work on our technique to make us sit higher in the water. And if a suit can aid you in doing that, it will make you faster. So to summarize what the Tenzo Elastic Hyperforce fabric does, is it means you get maximum compression with comfort and it allows you to put this suit on really easy. 
no more bloody knuckles needed. You don't need to get a forearm pump to get your suit on and you can get in and race without being fatigued from just putting your suit on. This applies to both men and women's suit and I have had women attest what I have already noticed myself when trying on the men's suit. Another big factor when it comes to tech suit performance is how hydrophobic the suit is. And until this suit, what you normally get is they make a suit, they use their fabric and they coat it with a, 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 a spray or a treatment a hydrophobic TB hue treatment that basically gives you that effect of beading and water repellency. Because it's simply a treatment on the fabric, it does wear off over time. And Arena thought, well, how can we do better than that? What they've done is they actually treated with the same hydrophobic TBU treatment every single yarn, every single thread of this suit is treated with water repellency. And then they treat it again once it's turned into a suit. So it's like double treated, permanent hydrophobic material. This suit is super water repellent and it lasts. I've already used this multiple times and I still can't believe how dry it is when I get out and you can see all the water beading up on it when you're in the water with it. When it comes to thin design, right now there's two colorways. There's this lovely black and teal and I'm a big fan of it. I like the teal taping. I like the, the teal arena logo. It's understated but still has a little bit of personality and flair. They also come with a very out there, a, a neon green with purple taping and pink taping. And that's one, if you really wanna stand out and have some character on the blocks, that's the version for you. I'm sure like with every brand, Arena will release future colorways, but I have no insight into what they are. And I really like the two that are currently on display. This would be my go-to, but I really like the, the neon green because it reminds me of the Carbon Pros that were super loud back in 2012 when every other suit was just black. The fit of this, they say, is a adjustable waist. I would still say it's a higher waist suit. You can't really have a low waist version of it. You can't just get it to sit low. But what you can do is pull it up a little bit higher if you want because of the flexibility of the fabric. I really like how it fits on the legs. I really like the comfort and everything else. But what I do find is the back of the suit feels a bit weird. Most suits, as they come up into the high waist, they have a little bit more tapering towards your waist to keep them fitting nicely. I find this doesn't have a taper and it's sort of just straight up the edges. And because of that, I do think you have to really tighten the drawstring a lot. There's no weirdness, you don't get water in the back or anything like that. You just have to really tighten up the drawstring. It's just one observation, but I get this to fit exactly as I would want a suit to fit. That's sort of semi-high waisted fit and it, it does just feel perfect. Regardless of all the technology, how does it perform? And I think buoyancy is the key feature you're gonna feel with a suit. I feel buoyant and I feel compressed but I also feel comfortable. I know I've said all of these things and it's been a theme of the whole review, but that really is the performance of this suit. It's great. It's a very high performance suit and it's my favorite arena suit to date. If you're a sprinter, I way prefer this to the Core FX. Without a doubt, this is better than the arena's previous sprint model. But where the Core FX felt really tight and really lacked mobility, this can go further. I would say this happily replaces the Glide and the Core FX in one suit. If you like something that's super thin and light, and really doesn't feel like you're wearing much, it's not gonna replace the Carbon Air because it, 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 there's still, it's a thicker material, it's a heavy material, but it still does have that comfort factor. If I was Arena now, I would say I would leave two models in the lineup. I'd leave this and I'd leave the Air. I don't think there's a need for the Glide, I don't think there's a need for the Core, but I do think the Air still has its place in the line because people do really like that super thin, comfy suit. Even though this is comfy, it is thicker. That being said, one of the athletes I've worked with in the past, Chad Leclo, who's been a Carbon Air faithful since it was released in 2013 or 14, has made the switch to the Primo. I always got annoyed that Chad didn't wear a better suit. I said, the 1500, why don't you wear the Carbon Core? And he said, ah, oh, don't like it, not comfy enough. This one gives him snap and comfort. If you've tried things like the Mizuno suit, the Pure Intent, the Venzo, the Core FX, and you like the snap and buoyancy that they might provide you, but feel like they don't give you enough freedom of movement, then you need to try the Primo right away. Who is this suit for? This suit is for everyone. It's really for any age grouper who wants a long lasting suit that will perform for every race. You can literally wear it for anything you do, from a 50 to a 1500. Florian Welbrock and Gregorio Pouchoneri wore this for the eight and the 1500 at the recent World Championships in Doha. And they say publicly that this is the suit they're wearing it. On the other end of the spectrum, Florent Manadou won the 53 at the Giant Open yesterday wearing this suit. I've never seen a suit be released by a manufacturer that has been adopted from 50 to 1500 this quickly. That's also the feedback I'm getting from Arena. When they went round to their colleges showing off this suit, nine out of 10 athletes, both men and women, said this was their favorite of the bunch. 
This has steamrolled the other arena models, which might have better value with things like the air, but this is the ultimate. I can say with confidence that Arena have done what they set out to do, make a flagship suit that sits above all their other models. I'm not exaggerating. This is my favorite Arena model today. It performs brilliantly. I love the look, I love the fit, I love the comfort, and everything that the technology says it does, does in spades. This does give compression, objective compression, measurable compression, while still giving you flexibility and comfort. It gives you buoyancy, and the water repellency is second to none, as is the longevity. I can't recommend this suit enough, and I really think you'll be happy when you try out the Primo. If you've already tried out the Primo, let me know in the comments. What do you think? Did you love it as much as I loved it? I wanna know. Before this video ends, I do just wanna preempt some comments that I know I'm gonna get. First of all, what is better? The Primo or the Mizuno GX Sonic 6 NV? And my answer to you is that if you want an absolute suit made simply for 50 meter races, I still think the Mizuno does something a little bit better. It has way more taping, it has more compression, and it is very limited in its use case. I don't think these are a direct comparison. This is a suit that is gonna be worn by world-class swimmers in the Olympic 1500 freestyle final. The Mizuno, it starts to get fatiguing even in 100 meter races, and is an absolute no-go for 200 meter events. That is not the case for this. This replaces the entire Mizuno range. So really what you should be doing is comparing this to the Mizuno GX Sonic 6 NV, CR, and ET. And this can do basically everything that the, the entire Mizuno range can do. In fact, when it comes to comparing this against the Speedo models, this is just way better. That's it, simple, real easy. Same goes to comparing it against Tear Shockwave. I know it looks quite similar in its makeup to the Tear Shockwave. This is way better, simple, done. Tear Shockwave is not a patch on this. Oh, and the Finis Hydro X. Again, miles better, the Arena Primo. Leaves it in its dust. This suit, when it comes to doing a tier list, is gonna be a solid S-Line model. I will make a tier list video in the future, so if you wanna watch that, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button on this, but the tier list will do all the comparisons, so stay tuned for that. But for now, I just wanted to do a few comparisons so you know a rough guideline of what I thought. Still, make sure you do leave me comments and let me know your thoughts on the Arena Prima if you've already tried it. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.